Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca. I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes. They're also known as plecos or L numbers within the aquarium trade. So what are plecos really known for? And one of the things that's become a bit of a meme is a lot of them can be quite elusive. Um, a lot of people might pay large sums of money and not actually see the fish. So here is kind of a video to talk about why and what you can do about it. So at the end of the day, most of these species are very elusive and if they're known for hiding, that's partially the reason why. They want to feel that they're not gonna get predated, there's nothing that's gonna spook them. At the end of the day, although they're armored with those dermal plates, they do have predators, so they have anything. There's plenty of videos from otters that came and eating some of the larger ones, but other predatory fish will take there, or predatory fish will take them as well. Um, there's a whole host of different reasons they do want to hide from predators, um, but they also want to. Basically, they're a little bit of more elusive group, and it does vary a lot. But they are very secretive fishes, and that is part of. The thing, if you really want to keep lower cards, most of them you'll have to understand that you might not see them so much and it does vary a lot. So reasons why it might be and what you could do about it, why um, they're quite elusive and number one will have to be that Pleco, uh, the tank itself, the tank mates are just too boisterous, too busy. And this really ha would happen more with a tank of like Malawi sickness that wouldn't work anyway. Or anything that's just too boisterous, they don't want to feel like they're going to get predated on. But they also don't have a chance to get food, there's no reason for them to come out. But that leads on to maybe the biggest reason that I'm going to count on is that it's also too busy outside of the tank. So a lot of uh, people place tanks in really busy areas of the house, if there's children running past, if there's um, anyone just suddenly walking past, or there's sudden movements kind of close by, that's going to really spook them, so that's why you might not see them so much. And a camera might be an obvious solution, so if you want to see them, there's many different uh, types of cameras, like ring cameras, that you can watch on your phone. Um, seeing their behaviour when they're not being watched. But even in fish rooms, and this is kind of the opposite side, is where people have tanks that aren't, there's not much movement around the tank, and it's not frequent movement around the tank, so the fish don't have a chance to get used to any movement. So there's this kind of balance between the two. And my biggest solution is to place tanks where you're going to be around a lot of the time so you, without having to move but so you can see those behaviors so i have my work desk here and i can see both tanks from the desk and i always have a desk in the room and then i see a lot more behavior without having to stand up and move which it really does make the difference when you want to see your fishes so i definitely recommend having a desk or even a temporary desk so there's a lot of fold-away desks and obviously you get fold-away chairs. So you can just sit around the tank and that's where you're going to see the best behaviour but you're going to have to do it long term. It's not something that you can suddenly do for like a week and expect to see the fishes. And they can still spook anyway. So sort of the third reason that is probably the biggest reason is a lot of people uh, just have just bought their fish. It might even be they've had their fish a year or more and they still don't see it. Fishes take a long time to acclimatise to a setup and also acclimatise to a situation, particularly if it changes a lot. And if um, is they like very new to the setup, they're going to spook more easily. And it just takes time. Even a few weeks is definitely not enough for them to acclimatise to being around people in that sort of situation. So, number three, uh, yeah, number three would be a bigger one, which is maturity. I find particularly as the fishes mature, they get a little bit more confident. But this also comes with another issue, is that males, as they mature, also tend to utilise caves more. They use it a lot as juveniles, um, but males will occupy those caves a lot more rather than more secluded spots. So that comes, it's kind of like... 
with the females you'll see them more but the males will utilize caves only reason they might sometimes they sit outside of the cave but females tend to do that as well females tend to move around a lot more whereas males just um, stay inside their cave a little bit more so reason number what would it be number four is cave placement and this kind of leads on from the last one because cave placement is really um, important especially when you're where you're placing your caves will really uh, indicate where your fishes are going to be especially if they're utilizing those caves and also where you're going to put those crevices that they're going to hide and indicates if you're going to be able to see them or not so this tank is probably a bad example of actually being able to see them to a degree, especially this cave where it opens at the back, much more wider. So you can only see through that crevice there and there is someone in there. You can just about see their caudal, their tail fin. I think that would be the last incisors. This one's a better example and you can see this is occupied by a gymnotus. And the big issue of caves is they will fight over caves. Um, they will... Um, argue over them even with other fishes you can see here I can see him because at least the caves face the front so ideally it's good for health checking as well you want all the caves facing the front and some way of being able to see inside of them so this one I can see like from that angle but yes you just want some way of seeing even through the decor where you can see in so this is probably not the best example, but you do often need lights to see in. And there's, ah, that's a little agaboensis there in his sideways caves. Sideways caves are probably the most difficult because just uh, on placement. So this is probably the best cave to be able to see everyone. Um, the, sorry, the best tank to be able to see everyone. So this one's actually got a Platystachys cotyliforus just outside of it. They don't use caves at all, don't they just sometimes sit there and this is a juvenile where you can see he's just he she's just sitting there chilling um but then an adult so this is an adult bow and sister sound and it just helps with health checking the other thing is tunnels can be quite useful um she's actually sat at the other end here using her obscenely sized tunnel but she's out a lot more she does spook and she doesn't like being sort of in the center of attention so but she is a lot more tamer than she used to be she used to be permanently in the cave but yeah everyone is just inside the caves but where the caves are all facing forwards i could see in and then um i could see from the desk it would be nicer to have them facing the other way but i can see from the desk where everyone is and I'm more likely to see them have any behaviours while it's light. Um, the other good thing about when thinking about placement is also lights. Changing the lighting colour to maybe a blue or um, something a bit dimmer and they're more likely to come out. Especially dimmer rather than blue. They are a lot, uh, a lot more likely to come out. Even like other catfishes like these platy stackers are a lot more active with the dimmer lighting. But yeah, everyone else is just... Uh, there's a... That's L322, was it L322? No, L322, which is a Paranthesis cave, is he better? No. It's a bit of the Ojingu Paranthesis species. But yeah, everyone else I think is in caves, they're just quite deep in their cave, like he's just too big to really go in all the way. As he just throws his poo out. Yeah, you can see they do, reorganize themselves and they will come out when they feel it's safe at the moment he's just not wanting to come out too much yeah he's just going back in and then she's just sat there she's like no don't want to come out so you can see how important cave placement is actually kind of manipulating them so you can see them. It doesn't change how confident they are, but it means you'll be able to see them from at least a distance um, or in the camera. Rather than if you have all the hiding places at the back, they're gonna kind of sit at the back and it doesn't really change um, whether they're like happy or not. Don't just take out caves so you can see the fishes because they're gonna be a lot more stressed, less likely to eat, less likely to be healthy in general. So just consider that. But, so point number, what would it be? Five?
five. I didn't number it, these properly, so, um, but point number five would be actually looking at what law cards or what plecos you actually want. Because there is a massive difference in confidence levels between the different genera, the different subfamilies, the different species. Some are a lot more boisterous than others, so like Pseudocanthicus, um, you're much more likely to see than you are. Even the barren sisters aren't the most confident, especially as they're juveniles. You're, I probably never saw some of them as they were when they were much younger and smaller. And sisters very elusive in general. But this, that's mostly from the subfamily hypostomny. Actually, if you want something confident, look at, or a little bit more confident, maybe more shoaling, which brings out a little bit more confidence, is stuff like the hypopotomine. So, so yeah, hypopotomine would be stuff like otosynclus, hypopotoma, uh, rhinotosynclus. They are little, they do spook, but having numbers, I think, brings their confidence levels out a lot more. And they are a little bit more easier to spot I think so I've never I think they're much better choice they're just a lot smaller apart from some of the hyperpotoma um, then a lot of the plecs that a lot of people really want they're rising in popularity um, they are a little bit more sensitive regarding diet which is probably the bigger one that makes them a little bit more difficult to care for they are a little bit more prone to bloat um, we're not fed that alga based diet because they're mostly algivores. Um, I think there's some sort of exception, but they're mostly that way inclined with diet and sort of partitioning their niche on that. The other group, actually, and I don't know why I almost forgot about this, uh, that would be the um, uh, Lord Carne, so also known as whiptails, although technically they should be the true plecos because. Blocostomus is actually Lorcarichthys, which is a whiptail. Um, the most confident ones of those would be the substrate dwellers, that's Pseudohemiodon, Planet Lacoria, not bigger, um, very easy to keep, uh, much more active, can be a little bit territorial. They do tend to hide in the sand a little bit, but once you feed, they'll be out and moving. They don't, um, it's not like little cars where you put food in your, I mean, it's not like hypostomia, you put food and a lot of them will just sit and watch and wait for you to go away sort of thing. So I definitely would recommend them a little bit more. Or even like Farloella stoosoma, I don't find them as elusive. I've got Farloella, not in these tanks though, and they are a lot more confident and they don't really spook at all, I can always see them. And therefore Stoosoma, Stoosomix, these, um, Lamentichthys, Lamentichthys tends to be a little bit more difficult to care for there. Um, so that sort of Farloella group uh, tends to be much more specialist towards algae rather than the more carnivorous side, which is those Pseudohemiodon, uh, Planilocoria, Lolcaria, those sort of ones. But, so Whiptails is kind of a split down the side in the middle and I'm excluding heartier because I've never seen them, I don't think in person. But definitely look at those as a option, especially if you're not fussed on like colour so much. I think some of them are absolutely stunning uh, regarding colour, but they're just as interesting and they're usually a much better price, especially if you want Farloella or Stoosoma, much better price, they're like what? 15 to 30 pounds, uh, depending on size. Interesting to spawn, not cave spawners who is like, have they bred? But you wouldn't know, and then by the time their eggs hatch, they might have got eaten. They um, lay their eggs on the glass, although that is it more easily for predation. My pair don't have anything else in the tank to predate on their eggs, so they constantly have produced eggs. But anyway, I'm going to end this here. If you have any questions, please ask. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.